Happy Wit Reviews Day number one. Um, hopefully there will be many more of these in the future, so uh, if you didn't get a chance to prepare any reviews today, it's okay. There will be future dates. Um, I personally am really enjoying writing up a lot of different reviews, um, sharing them, and I decided that this would be a really great opportunity for me to try to do a YouTube vlog review again. And when I was thinking about which book I might want to review that I haven't necessarily talked about uh, yet, I decided to talk about Jenny Erpenbeck's The End of Days. And sharp-eyed readers of my blog might recall that I actually have mentioned this on the blog, if not reviewed it. Um, and that's because when I recently read Erpenbeck's Visitation, I mentioned in my review that it was very surprising to me that I disliked Visitation um, or was very apathetic about Visitation after having really loved The End of Days. And one of the things that I sort of realized in that review was that I kind of initially thought that the first book by Erpenbeck that I had read, The Book of Words, was sort of the exception. Everybody seemed to love her writing and her books, and I thought that I was a little bit off there. And then everyone recommended The End of Days. I read it and I loved it. And then I went back and said, okay, I'm gonna try to read Visitation, and I didn't like it. And so I realize now that it's actually The End of Days, which is the exception. And as I kind of think about that, it makes a lot of sense because one of the things that I really, really liked about The End of Days is the structure and the concept. And so for those of you who aren't familiar, this is a book that basically tells um, multiple scenarios of a young woman's death um, from childhood through, well, less young womanhood and, and later in life. And it sort of tracks these different points where she can potentially die, describes the end of her days, and then moves on. And this concept is really cool to me, both as a fan of sort of sci-fi and fantasy, because it sort of plays with time and concepts and the very definition of life, I guess, uh, which I sort of just conceptually really enjoyed. Um, but also, it's a really good human story. It, it's a coming-of-age story to a large extent, historical in many regards, sort of tracking um, the development of a nation. Erpenbeck tells a lot of stories about sort of uh, East Germany, and um, there's, there's some of those themes uh, here as well. And I really like the book also because it felt almost ethereal. And we have a topic here that's, you know, basically it's a book about death uh, to a large extent, but in being about death, it is about life. And it felt like Erpenbeck's sort of distant writing fit. And it, it was so much more explicit than the other books by her that I've read. It, Visitation frustrated me so much because it felt like I had no grasp on the story or the characters, and that's something that's very, very important for me. But The End of Days does focus on one woman, it does focus on this character, and really shares her fully. And I cared about her, and I cared about her story, and the writing made me feel like, like I was experiencing it really, really nicely. And it's a beautifully written book, beautifully translated. Um, all of the praise that you have probably heard about it is totally justified. I read this, I think it was in a day, and I was just swept up. I, I really loved it. And so here is an opportunity to talk about uh, women in translation that I love and think that everyone should read. The End of Days is one of those books. You should read it, even if you've read one of Erben Beck's other books and, like me, didn't really connect to it, didn't really like it. 
I highly recommend The End of Days, translated um, by Susan Bernofsky, who is really, really incredible. Um, just a, a beautiful book, and you should all read it.